All right, so let's move on to this section down here. We have a title, a paragraph with a link in it, and then four columns, each with an image, a title, and a paragraph. Now we can take care of the title. We've done text fields before. This one's going to be slightly different. We have a paragraph that needs a link inside of it. Before we were just dealing with isolated links, so we'll be introducing a new field there. As far as the four columns go, we're probably going to be using something called a repeater field. And the repeater field allows you to repeat content over and over again as needed. So let's jump into it. Let's jump over to our field group and then add a field for our title. And since we already used the word title up here, we can't just use title again. We needs to be a unique ID per field group. So what we're gonna do is call this section title. That'll give us our unique field name. Then we're going to do section copy. And this is going to give us our WYSIWYG editor, which I'll show off here in a second. And let's hit save. Let's go back to our page and hit refresh. So now we have section title and section copy. Section title, really standard. We've dealt with that before. However, section copy is actually looking like a more complex field. And if we scroll back up to the top, it's, you can notice that it looks exactly like the default WordPress WYSIWYG. And this is awesome because now we have the power of the WYSIWYG at our fingertips. We can place this anywhere and have all the same features that the normal WordPress WYSIWYG would have. So let's start with our title. Let's copy and paste that into our section title. And let's just copy and paste all of this in there as well into our section here. And then let's take a look at the text area. It looks like it just came right over with our H4 and our anchor tag. And it's all looking like it's pretty ready to go. It kept the formatting. It's really everything that we wanted. So let's just move right on, hit save and jump into our code. So if we scroll up here, we have our H2. That needs to be our section title. So the field section title. Standard stuff there. And in fact, we can delete this whole line because it's gonna come with that H4 in there. the field section copy. Let's refresh it and see what it gives us. Gives us the exact same thing that we had before, which is exactly what we want. So let's jump into my inspector here. So we've got our H2, we've got our H4, and we've got our link in there. So I hope you can kind of see the power of this WYSIWYG field. I mean, if you're familiar with WordPress at all, you'll understand kind of what the power of the WYSIWYG is, but I hope you can understand that this can be repeated multiple times. You can have multiple WYSIWYGs all over the place. It becomes really powerful. And anything that you add to the WYSIWYG up here can be added to the WYSIWYG down here. And what I mean by that is this is the tiny MCE editor that comes with WordPress. So as you extend that out, you will also be able to extend out the buttons on this as well. So now that we have that section taken care of, um, let's move on to what is the repeater field. Now the repeater field, I'll probably spend a little bit more time explaining simply because it's one of the more complex fields that advanced custom fields offers. So let's open up a new field right here and let's select repeater right there. So we're gonna call this selling points. And you'll notice down here that we now have this section called subfields. And it looks an awful lot like this up here. 
So it looks like that we can add more fields here. So let's add a new field. And what did we want to make? We wanted to have a place for an image, a place for a title, and a place for a paragraph. So let's add one for title. One for an image. Actually, let's reorder those in the order that they appear on the page. And which actually brings me to another point. You can reorder these. Yeah, that's uh, another thing that you can do at uh, um, any point. You can start dragging these things around if you want to reorder them. So handy little feature there if you mess up like I did and, and put them in the wrong order. And then we had our copy. And this is probably going to just be a text area. We haven't dealt with the text area, but it's just like the text one. Just it gives you a text area field rather than a text input. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. And let's just save that and see what it gives us. Let's go back to our page and hit refresh. All right, so now we have the selling points area with three columns in it with the headings of image, title, and copy, just like we had set up in the previous screen. If we click add row, all of a sudden we get an image field, a text field, and we get a text area field. It looks like we can add more and more and more. And so that's kind of the magic of the repeater field. It allows you to repeat a group of fields. And so I hope you can kind of notice the power of this right away is that who's to say that this four column layout always needs to be four columns. It could be that at certain, you know, think of these as like, you know, uh, sales that are going on or something like that. They could have four sales going on. They could have three sales going on. They could have eight sales going on. And that kind of allows them to, and by, when I say them, I mean the client, to add and delete those sections as well. And you have control over the code. All they're doing is entering in the text and images. So let's take a look at some other features that the repeater field has really quick before we move on. So let's open back up our repeater field and let's scroll down a little bit further. You can see that there's this minimum rows and maximum rows right here and it asks for a number. That number is kind of as the name implies, you can set a minimum number of fields that can be repeated and a maximum. So if there always needs to be one sale going on on the site at, one, at all times, that's mandatory, then you can set the minimum amount of rows to one. It's essentially making that field required. But if they're never supposed to show more than four on the home page, then you can set a maximum number of rows. Let's do that. Let's hit update. And since we haven't saved our page, let's just refresh and it should just go back to normal. So now that we have set our minimum rows to one, we automatically have one because there can't be any less. But if you add more, eventually this button is going to get grayed out and I can't click it anymore. So now our maximum rows, maximum row number has been hit and it won't let us do any more. So pretty handy and something that I use quite often. Now, another thing that I want to mention is that, well, we only have three items right here. And that's not always going to be the case. We could have something that repeats five or ten fields, maybe. Well, that can get pretty skinny if we keep stacking them side by side like this. Just to show you, let's maybe duplicate the title a few times and kind of make things a little overwhelming. Hit update, go back, refresh. And you can already see how that's starting to get a little bit too skinny for my taste. Like it's getting, if I mean, if these were any other fields besides text fields, it would start to become unreadable. Well, we can come down a little bit further here and we can go to these layouts. 
And if you want the, everything to stack on top of each other, you can do this block layout. If we go back after hitting save, refreshing, you can see that everything is now stacked on top of each other, giving each field a little bit more breathing room. So this is something that I also use when I start to have a lot of fields inside of my repeater is I, I'll just stack them like this. Now let's start adding, well, let's first of all, actually let's remove all of those fields. It's starting to stress me out. Delete, delete, delete. All right. Save and continue on. So let's add our four rows. And let's start entering in the content. And hit add image. And let's grab, which one's our first one? It is semantic with that little code symbol there. So we're going to hit that. And we want semantic. Copy and paste that right into there. And let's copy and paste the paragraph. All right, so now we have all of our data inside of our repeater. And let's go to our code and start implementing this. Because the syntax for retrieving this data is going to be a little bit different. All right, so here we are inside of our selling points class. And we want to basically reduce all of this HTML markup into a single block that gets repeated over and over again. So let's delete the other three and keep one for reference. All right, so first we're going to need to open up a couple of PHP tags. And if you've done WordPress development for very long, you're probably familiar with the WordPress loop. The if have posts, while have posts, the post. The way that we get the repeater fields to output is through a syntax that looks pretty familiar to that, pretty similar to that, I should say. So now that we have ACF installed, we have this function called have rows. So if we have rows, for our selling points repeater. And I'm going to point out right now that the selling we're getting that selling points key from this. Our repeater is called the selling points. So if have rows, if we have any rows, while we have those rows, while have rows selling point selling points, and I'm just seeing that's not selling's point, that's selling points. And while, and then we have the row. So this looks awfully familiar to the WordPress loop, and that's where we will be adding in our content. So let's just copy and paste this right in there. we close out PHP give ourselves a little room and let's format that a little bit all right so we want to repeat this over and over again but we want the data from each one of our selling points that we created here the first time through it should get these three things the second time through it should get those three things so let's start with the title because that's an easy one right so PHP, the subfield. All right, so that's a new one. The subfield. Now this is going to be in reference to each one of these is a group, and then each one of them are referred to as subfields. The title is a subfield of this instance. The image is a subfield of this instance. The copy is a subfield of this instance. So Every time that it loops through, it's going to get the subfield and get the one, the subfield with the key of title. Which also, I remember earlier in the same video, we also had something else that was called title. 
Now inside of repeater fields, you don't have to worry about the keys being as the same as other fields. You can't have another repeater called title or something like that, but you can have a subfield that's called title while still having another top level field called title. Okay, hope that hopefully that makes sense. So let's go back down to here. We have the subfield title and then we had the subfield copy, the subfield copy. And then we need to get rid of this SVG and we need the, let's do echo get sub field. Works the same way as field and then image. And we want the URL out of there. Let's take a look at this and see how we did. All right, nothing changed, which is exactly what we want. It's kind of a scary feeling sometimes, like, oh, nothing changed, but no, in this case, it's exactly what we want. We want nothing to change. So let's actually change the content a little bit and yeah, let's get rid of this window um, and then make sure that it updates. So let's scroll down. Let's say this is not responsive and customizable sort of, and professional, I guess. Let's go up there and save that, make sure that that works. Yeah, everything's updated. So let's imagine that, you know, normally when like a client comes to you and it's like, I want to reorder these things can you reorder them for me? Well, you would have to normally go into your markup and copy and paste the columns around until it was the way that the client wanted, wanted it. But now you can actually, just like I was saying, you can drag and drop those fields around. You can do the same thing here. So you can say, well, we want this uh, not responsive uh, column to be the first one. Well, you can just hover over the number two here. You'll get that new cursor and you can drag and drop it as the first one. Hit save. And now not responsive is first, semantic is second, customizable sort of is third, and so on. So super powerful there as well. And we can also just delete one. They're like, we no longer want to show the fourth column on there. Well, just over here we got this minus sign, hit remove row, hit save and refresh. Now we've got our three columns. So this has been like a small tour of the WYSIWYG field and the repeater field. These are some of the, the two fields that I see myself reaching for almost constantly. The repeater field I can confidently say is the field that I use the most. It's so powerful. It allows for very flexible layouts and I hope you learned uh, something new today. And in the next tutorial, we will be going over the user field. That's gonna be the field that we're going to use to actually display user data on the front end of our website. Alongside of that, we'll also be looking into conditionally loading fields, so they're only appearing when we want them to. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. I wanted to take a quick second to introduce you to Kinsta. Kinsta is a hosting platform that specializes in WordPress. Everything is geared towards making your site easy to manage and blazing fast. They offer free SSL certificates, a free CDN, and plans starting at just 30 bucks a month. If you're interested in hosting for yourself or for a client, go ahead and click the link in the description. If you end up signing up, you'll be supporting me so I can continue making these videos. Anyway, have a great day and hope to see you in the next video.